either working for someone or have our own business. We have numerous chances to attend meetings, conferences, and social gatherings. Imagine you go to a meeting and you're ready to make some new friends. You have the target. When you approach her and try to talk to her, she gives you an expression like, what are you doing? <laughs> Who do you think you are? And we also find that she is not at ease. She's holding her arms, reduce the eye contact, or even tries to step back. How embarrassing. But then you may be the one to break because you may have unknowingly stepped into her personal space that should feel a little bit frightened or frightened. Today I'm going to talk about the personal space and how you can apply this knowledge in communication and social interactions. Personal space refers to the area surrounding us where we consider as our comfort zone in relation to other people in social settings. To help explain that concept, I have to bring along this diagram, which is the personal reaction bubbles. According to an American anthropologist, Edward Hall, in 1966, there are four main zones of personal distance we try to keep from others. The first one is the intimate distance. It is around the touching area and then all the way to the 18 inches. It is reserved for lovers, children, close family, friends and members, and pets. The personal distance is somewhere around, starts from the arm's length at around 18 inches, all the way to the four feet away. This area is reserved for conversation with friends, talking to associates and group discussion. Social distance. It ranges around the four to eight feet or even 12 feet away, which is in here, the green zone. This area is used for strangers and new acquaintances. Finally, the public space or the public distance. It including anything more than the eight feet or 12 feet away from you. This is for the lectures, for speeches, anything for the larger audiences. Special attention here is for the personal distance or space. The significance is when you consider someone in your friends or personal zone, you pre literally prefer him to be at a certain distance, away from your intimate zone, but close enough to be a friend. There are so many reasons that affect this distance we try to keep away from others. This distance is highly variable and very subjective. The influencing factors can be age, gender, status, culture, and personality. But among all factors, culture has the most direct influence. Most cultures in Southern Europe and most of Latin America, they are naturally more passionate and open. Touching and close proximity are most acceptable and most welcome. On the other hand, Asian countries, Northern Europe or Middle East can be regarded as distant cultures. They tend to need more personal space. It doesn't mean that they are less friendly or enthusiastic. It just probably takes them longer to be warm up in a social relationships. However, saying that a person from a culture or country, need more personal space can be a generalization sometimes. If the person is brought up in a different environment, like since childhood he was exposed to liberal cultures, beliefs, and values, he can develop into a more passionate character eventually. The personal space can also be affected by living environments. People living in densely populated areas have a low expectation for personal space. In urban communities like Hong Kong, New York, there's people everywhere. Streets, elevators, subways, it's all packed. That is so difficult to maintain a reasonable personal space. 
So when people, even though they find that it's very psychologically disturbing with that growth facility, they still have to accept it because it's a norm. Finally, another biggest factor is the personality. Why or how someone acts to something or a situation is entirely depends on his mood, attitude, intention, or relation to you. And depends on, especially like for extroverts, they naturally keep less distance from others when compared to introverts. So therefore, extroverts can get along fine with other extroverts, but they annoy some of the introverts. <laughs> True. Knowing all these factors <coughs> behind personal space, you give you a huge advantage when dealing with people. Because you can analyze their actions better and understand what they really think. You have a better idea if your presence is welcome or not, and to act accordingly. Therefore, handling social relationships doesn't have to be like walking on thin ice. When you try to connect with someone, don't get too personal too soon. Observe their body languages. If they feel that they tense up, feeling discomfort or anxiety, respect the personal space. Have some patience, earn the trust, and gradually enter into the personal zone. If you are the one that needs more space or feel that your space has been invaded, try to understand the intruder's reasons behind. If you believe he's sincere, then open up your comfort zone and ready to take some friends in. After all, communication is always a two-way process. It's always take both parties willing to step forward for it to be a win-win situation. Thank you.